The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 13th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next uh, 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call them, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead and send me an email. Send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And just like John did earlier this morning, please go ahead and put radio show question inside that subject. And, of course, if you're inside our Tigris, then won't any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out there. you got the Dow that's turned positive, up 40 points. So the S&P is off 10. NASDAQ 100 down 92. Russell's off 5. Semis are up 12 points right now. Trannies are off 71. we got a mixed bag. Gold is not mixed. It's down $18. $16.59 is the print. That's off a little over 1%. Silver's down 21 cents, over 1% as well. $18.72. Lights recruit is up 84 cents. Natural gas up 10 pennies to 30 treasury. Printed out 124.01. That's down one point and four ticks out there. So you got the Dow that has just uh, turned positive. So let's go uh, take a look at its equity future charts, see what kind of signals we can get from it, if anything. So uh, momentarily, we'll have the uh, white background screens. We'll have uh, multiple time frames. And we're going to focus our eyes on the first time frame. That's a 10-minute time frame, bottom right. Why are we going to focus on that? Because at 11.10, less than a minute from now, Bar number nine of a TD nine count top is going to complete. Now, if we get a TD nine count top, that could take place by 1120, or it should take place by 1120 because the top can form on the bar following bar number nine. So we want to keep an eye on the 10 minute time frame chart because this will provide us with a indication as to what the Dow's intent is. Now, it's very possible that the pattern just simply gets negated and there's no stopping, which would then tell us, at least for a 10 minute time frame, that it is in a, a strong upward momentum move. We don't know that just yet. We do have a wide ranging bar that's forming bar number nine. So I would expect that bar number 10 if you will, the bar falling bar number nine uh, would complete, and that would identify that uh, TD nine count top pattern. Now, what then, what that then should do, is uh, create a retracement, and the uh, level of retracement could take price all the way back to 29042 or so. I use that level because that's the 10 minute oscillator and change line, and that number is going to definitely change as price moves higher and lower. As far as other signals out there. Other than maybe trying to create an A to B equals CD pattern, I don't really know if there's enough of a retracement out here. And plus, I'd have to use the uh, bottom. I'd have to use the high and the low, the same bar. And Stevie hates doing that. So 50-minute chart's not helping us. The 30-minute chart, we just simply open this up to see what we've got out here for it. Really not much. There was a TD9 count top that had formed at 8 o'clock this morning. And so if price is able to take that level out, it was the uh, bar following bar number 9 that formed that top, that high out there is at 29.618. So if price takes that out uh, uh, sometime today, that tells us about a further rally. The further rally would be a target of 30,111. That's a TD9 count breakdown area for the 30 minute chart for the Dow equity future contract. 60 minute time frame. I don't see anything else out here helping us out. Nothing on the 120 that I see. You do, you may get a four hour 
Roads went to indicator bottom uh, for the uh, four-hour time frame chart. Price did pull back this morning, and where it found support was its TD9 count breakout area. That's both on the four- and the five-hour time frame charts out there. And the depth, come back to the daily. The daily right now, if it closes one tick higher, it will generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. Why? Well, first of all, prices are stretched, and you've got the Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's out there. And yesterday's high and low has already been exceeded. So if you get one tick in the direction, the opposite direction of the uh, trend out there, which is the downside, then you would have a key reversal buyer. Now, the Dow already has a buy the D point pattern. That was tested earlier this morning. I don't think price got all the way down there. The low of that pattern from October the uh, 3rd is at uh, 28,635. Today's low, 28,671. Yeah, so price never got down there. Uh, why is the Dow the strong of the uh, links out? The strong one of links out here, mostly because of foreign capital. Foreign capital, and I'm not talking individual investors. I'm talking big bucks. They want liquidity. The Dow is where they would park their uh, capital, and so that is a uh, very much of a possibility. So, if the uh, Dow can close above uh, today, I'd say if it can close above 29.360 then that would suggest a further rally. Now, it may just be a rally that lasts between today and tomorrow. Typically, counter trend moves inside a market. You would get uh, moves in uh, bars of two, and so uh, two to three bars out there. So that's what that would be signaling. Uh, so you can see bar number nine is already completed on the uh, TD9 count. Uh, the bar following that is going to complete during this 10 minutes. So we've got eight more minutes into uh, that. So that's the uh, that's what I see when I take a look at the Dow Equity Future Contract. In summary, the daily bottom is still in place. You may get another bottoming signal today. The four and five hour charts, their breakout levels have held that support. The four hour chart might generate a TD9, a Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom pattern out there. In the short term, we're looking at a, a 10 minute chart that's got a TD9 count top that should see some type of retracement where that retracement finds support, which is at the 29076 level or 77 level, right around there, is where it should find support. If it doesn't find support there, 28965 would be the area to look. And that's what's going on with the Dow equity future contract. The semis, they're trading up about 1% or 25 uh, bucks out there. Let's do this here. Let's go take a look at the uh, semis. It may take, oh, they're already on the screen. That's a beautiful thing. Now, here we're getting a potential bottom signal. We'll get that if, in fact, this is where price closes today. I don't know where the semis will close today. But you can see at this moment at 11.13 in the morning on a daily time frame, you have a stretched market. You've got that Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Now, the way that that signal gets confirmed is the, and at least to the downside, a, a, a bullish signal would be a the cavalry arrives. And that in, means that we would see a bullish reversal candle. Well, we've got that as long as price closes over the uh, close of or the open of yesterday. Yesterday's open inside the SMHs was 176.57. We're at 178.49. So that would give you a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That would then only suggest a move up to its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 182. But if price can overtake that, then the signal would be a move up to the 190.94, another battle at 195.03, a third battle at, uh, or fourth battle at 197.08, and the last battle would be at 200.37. On a weekly basis, bar number eight looks like it will complete, but bar number nine must complete next week out there for that to generate some kind of a bottom pattern out here, and your bar number nine on a monthly time frame. So the semis, at least as of 11.14 in the morning, they're saying to entertain the idea of a bottom. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, up, folks. So during that break, we had the markets go mean and green out there. So we started the show, everything in the red. Uh, we don't have everything in the green here as we speak right now, and uh, the moves in the market are slowing my system down. So uh, today, uh, Stevie might need to just simply talk slower while we uh, try to pull up uh, charts and everything. So uh, you've got the uh, Dow, I don't know, it's up maybe around 227 points. My screen is kind of frozen right here. But what is not frozen is the screen that you're looking at, which is a 30-minute time frame chart for the SMHs. So we talked about the daily time frame that uh, appears to be generated in Rhodes Momentum Indicator Bottom. If we look at the 30-minute time frame chart, this is courtesy of Basil Chapman. This formed wave number seven. That was at the gap to the downside this morning. That's off of the highs out here uh, from back at about 10 o'clock in the morning. On October the 6th. Now, price is above. This is a 30 minute time frame chart. Price is above the top of the 30 minute profile. So, the uh, price target we're trading at 180.62 should be 191.34. That's a 30 minute TD9 count breakdown level. Now, we had a request to uh, take a look at. Yeah, how am I going to do this? Okay, I know how I'll do this. We have a request from John to take a look at bonds. John is thinking of going long bonds. Now, I responded back to John. I have not heard back from him because I was more curious as to uh, – because the question was just, Steve, I'd like your thoughts um, on bonds looking to buy. It's now the right time. And what I don't know with regard to uh, with regard to that question is uh, what's the length of time? Is this just a trade? Is this a, an investment or, or what have you? So what I did share with him is, hey, I'll review these charts for you. I was hoping to get that information so that I could maybe, you know uh, – uh, provide an answer relevant to the question versus just looking at the bond. So here's what we do know. On a monthly basis, 123.30 is going to be the key number to watch. If there's a close below that, it will negate in one month. That would be the month of October. It's TD9 count bottom. 
And then, John, the signal would be you've got a strong momentum move to the downside, which I suspect is what we really have that is in play here. Uh, on a weekly time frame chart, you are in bar number nine. You are in wave number seven. We took a look at that on a 30-minute time frame chart for the SMHs out there. Uh, but what you really want to see here on a weekly chart is not just the TD9 count bottom, but because you've got a trigger of a rose went to indicator signals, a bullish reversal candle, to then access that you would have a, that suggests that you would have a trade. Now that trade taken up to about the 128, 30, 128, 129 ish type level out there. The daily time frame chart still has a TD9 count bottom. It, no, I take that back. It does not have a TD9 count bottom. It has a buy the D point bottom, and that remains in effect as long as price remains above, closes above on a daily time frame. 123.30. That area has been tested and is rejected. There is a new profile that has formed. So let's say John were to take a long trade here. Because we've got a new profile, it, what he'd have to consider is that uh, you've got this is a bearish structured profile on a daily time frame that has formed. And so your resistance level between 126, 127 and a half probably out there. So is this a good trade knowing that you've got resistance on the daily time frame up there? Even if I could find a good short term signal out here, the answer is no. So, John, I'm just going to suggest uh, unless you're just a trader and then if that's the case and go down to some intraday charts and trade it, are bonds the things to hold? And my answer to that is, no, I would stay as far away from bonds as you possibly can out there. But that's just uh, Stevie's opinion. And really, it's the opinion of all the other traders out there and the opinion of the market. If we take a look at where the 30-year Treasury, and I, actually, I was surprised because I hadn't really looked at uh, this. If we take a look at where the 30-year Treasury, I'll change screens here, has uh, traded back to, it's back to 2013. 2013 in one year. We've gone all the way back there. So if we take a look at this, the 124.06 level happens to be the high from the uh, year of uh, 2003 out there. And I suspect what we're going to see is a uh, run much, much lower over time inside of the 30-year uh, treasury out there. So I hope that helps you out, John. Uh, thanks so much for the request. We had another request. This was for SNP inside the time. What about TBT? Yeah, TBT would be where you would be staying um, out there. So uh, you know, the opposite to the uh, short side. Now, what I would do if you're looking to enter TBT, and I assume that that's what G-Man's question is, knowing that you've got this new profile out here uh, and the 12330 has held, I'd be looking to sell at the uh, top of that uh, profile level. That's what that's what I would be doing. I would say no, not now. Uh, for the TBT because you've got that you've got that piece of information that is available to you. So why don't we come back to that? Uh, hey, by the way, I'll be recording tomorrow's show. Uh, between 8 and 9 in the uh, morning out there. So I do hope that you'll uh, join me there. And so the level that you'd be looking to sell into would be about 127.21. That is the top of the 30-year uh, treasury uh, 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 current market profile. So, gee, man, I hope that that helps you out. Now, there was a request out. Well, let me close this down. Just simply, and I do mean close it down, just simply so that I can try to free up a little bit of uh, speed out here. And uh, but I don't know where the issue in my system is coming from. But uh, we had a request to go take a look at Taiwan Semiconductor. TSM is the uh, ticker symbol out here. So we've still got the SMH. Now, the SMHs have hit the key level of resistance so far in a daily time frame. As long as these charts are up there, that's at red oscillator and change line. That's at 182.37 ish out there. So if there's going to be a market rally, the semis are going to need to participate. And the semis are going to have to close above that daily red oscillator and change line out there, even with the Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, because as long as price remains, remains below that, the signal is basically neutral out there. Now let's try to get the uh, TSM charts up here. I don't know how long this is going to take to populate. I was trying to get those on my black background charts, and the system was just kind of freezing up. So let me, And it's still, son of a gun. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So hopefully this here populates, and I wish I were a, a good, uh, there we go. So we've got this going here. So well, we have today, so this bottomed a couple of days ago with a, uh, well, let me see, did we take out the low? Two days ago, the low was 62.62. Today's low, 62.32. So wave number seven, bottom uh, pattern out here on, on the daily time frame for Taiwan uh, Semiconductor. Price right now has regained its red oscillator and change line. And as long as S&P, as long as price closes above 67.45, then it has some sellers up top. Those sellers, you're going to be four different levels that I'll provide to you. The first level is 71.29. That's the bottom of the current daily profile. The second level is the center, slightly bearish structured profile, and that would be a 73.11. 
The uh, safeties, they're sitting at 74.93, and the end zone out here is at 81.14. That's his TD9 count breakdown area out there. That's on the daily time frame. Let's see what Taiwan Semiconductor is doing for the weekly and the monthly. Now, if this were the week, if this was, uh, which is obviously is Thursday, but if this was Friday, 4 p.m., then on a weekly basis, Taiwan Semiconductor would generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom because right now it looks like we have a bullish hammer candle. No idea what this candle will look like tomorrow at 4 p.m. But if you do get a bullish reversal candle on a weekly basis, that would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. You still may have a bottom out here because today or today, tomorrow will generate bar number eight of a TD9 count. And then next week, uh, as bar number nine would complete, as long as Taiwan Semiconductor closes below 7387. But if you get that bullish reversal candle today, you don't have to worry about the TD9 count. You don't have to whether it comes to fruition next week or not because you'd have a valid bottom. Now, 73 bucks even, Stephen, as we speak, is where its TD9, uh, I'm sorry, is where its oscillator and change line resides at. So price needs to close above that. And then you'd have a battle at 78.27 and 87.32. So your battlegrounds need to see a close above 67.41. Then it will take on 71.29, then 73.11, then 74.93. And 72.99. That's an area. Well, you've got you've got it out there. I think you do. And hey, look, you've got a TD9 count bottom. It's likely to form on a monthly basis. TSM will be right. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I'm trying to get my system kind of set up here. It's uh, just been totally hosed by uh, what the markets are doing out here. So I know that the uh, S&P is up about 35 points out there. I know that by taking a look at a television screen. And uh, why isn't this thing starting here? 
Okay, so we're going to get that shot. But I do have the uh, charts up here from Microsoft. So my Ninja Trader charts uh, are working uh, just fine. So the reason I went to take a look at what Microsoft was doing uh, was uh, because you know, it, it still has not generated the uh, bullish reversal candle. It's, it's not really able to do that today. But if price can overcome its oscillator and change, now we're looking at the daily time frame right now. That's on the left-hand side. Uh, what we can see out here is that price is right up at the resistance level. That's its uh, red oscillator and change line. So it's about 230.50. The exact number is 230.48 out there. Not that that's going to matter. And if price can close above that, then what you should see, regardless of whether this is confirmed to bottom or not, would be a move up to the 237.13 or 241.08 level. And I would uh, more likely suggest 241.08. On a weekly time frame, you've got bar number eight here that uh, – could or should form this week. But again, next week, in order for bar number nine to complete, Microsoft would have to close below 237.92 and you're at 230.32. Monthly time frame has a TD9 count bottom as well. That's obviously not going to confirm until um, until uh, the end of October. So let's do this. Uh, one of the charts, and I want to, because I want to close these, this might be hogging up a little bit of my system memory, although it says I'm only using 42%. And only 12% of the CPUs. Very odd. Um, in any event out here, if we take a look, what I want to look for is where's, where are we at with market breadth? So this is a 30-minute time frame chart. This is for the S&P 500. And right now, uh, we had a, a bullish crossover that took place at 11.10 this morning. Uh, you've got 254 instruments above profile, 154 below. That's for the S&P. So that's a very bullish out here. Uh, the NQ or the NASDAQ 100, as we take a look at it, also bullish from a 30-minute time frame, also crossing at about 11.10 this morning. You've got 58 instruments above the top, 27 below the bottom. So the 30-minute profile out there is a 3-minute task mark breadth, I should say, is bullish. So now, has that bled through to the 60-minute time frame? So let's go take a look at it. And the answer is no. The now, let me switch over first to the S&P 500. The answer there is no. So this says be careful. Even though you got marks that are to the upside, from a market breadth standpoint, we still have more instruments trading below the bottom of their hourly time frame. That would be 400, 403 of the S&P 500 stocks are trading below the bottom of their profile. So you got to expect some selling out here. I would expect some selling. And you have 39 instruments above the top. Boy, that is about as bearish as you can get. Maybe we can get more bearish than that. That's a 60-minute time frame. What's the 240 look like out here? 240 has, uh, no, 240, yeah, 382 below, 29 above. Man, this market's got its work cut out for it if we're going to get a couple-day rally out there. 34 above the daily, 294 below the um, uh, the daily uh, profiles out there. Let's change over and take a look at the NDX 100. The NDX 100, come on, switch over. Man, things are slow. And if we take a look at 60-minute profile out here, let me get rid of this. Oh, I'm sorry, I did have it. The 60-minute uh, profile, this shows 11 instruments above the top, 64 below the bottom on a four-hour time frame. What we have out here is seven above the top, 76 below the bottom. So let's take a look at, close this out too, see if we, and um, yeah, let's get to the, let's get to the multi time frame charts and let's go ahead. We took a look at the Dow. Now we want to go do is, I'm sorry about that folks. Uh, now what we want to do is go take a look at the NQ out here. So let's put up the NQ charts. This may take a moment to uh, populate, but de oops, and it will definitely take a long time if I don't type in the proper symbol out here. So there we go. So hopefully this doesn't uh, uh, take too long. You've got the uh, Dow is up 384, S&P is up 37, NASDAQ's up 82 out here. So we're waiting for these NQ charts to populate. We know on a 30-minute basis we're market breadth bullish, and on a 60-minute uh, time frame and 240 and daily and so forth, we're market breadth bearish. Now on a daily time frame, we can see that the NQ uh, right now is showing a key reversal bar. The key reversal bar, again, where the prior high and lows have been exceeded, that's the prior day. Uh, where uh, you're in extended condition. We certainly are with the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal that is in place out there. And if you close one tick to the upside, that would be a bullish key reversal bar. Now, what the NQ really needs to do, it's made its way up to where a uh, where it would find resistance, the daily oscillator and change line. That oscillator and change line is currently printed at 10,987. That's a level that price needs to clear in order to suggest a move up to the 11,241 area. The five-hour time frame chart, no bottom 
pattern that I've got here. The four-hour time frame chart, roads went to indicator signal. Price needs to close above 11, 136.50. I'd write that down on my pad of paper. If you see a close above that, pretty good uh, indication that we're going to see a further move higher. Two-hour time frame chart, also trying to form a roads went to indicator bottom. Price right now is trading above profile out there. This candle is going to complete in 25 minutes out there. It's currently 1135. 60 minute time frame, 30 minute time frame. I don't have any kind of a bottom signal out here. What we do have, so the NQ on a 10 minute basis, remember we we're looking at a 10 minute chart for the Dow equity future contract. We showed that TD9 count. We said, you know, based on that wide ranging bar, odds would favor that uh, this would form a uh, TD9 count top on the bar following bar number nine. Well, the NQ, the same thing out there. And it just simply was negated right away. So that tells us about strong momentum to the upside. Got the Dow up 430 out there. So it does look like what these charts are telling us, other than this resistance level up here in the daily time frame chart, uh, we should see a at least a two-day rally. Two-day rally would be uh, normal out there. Confirmation, I think, would be, again, a close above the uh, – a move above – close above 10, 991. That's the current oscillator and change line for the NQ. Just looking to see if there's anything else here that I should pick up for you. Nothing that I see. Now, it was a 60-minute time frame chart. Remember, it was a 60-minute time frame chart on the NQ as well as the ES that showed that massively negative market breadth. So here's the level to be watching. That's at 11.029.25 level for the NQ. In fact, that, that, I think this is the same level on the 30-minute time frame chart, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken. But let me uh, go ahead and open up the 30-minute chart. Yeah, 11.029.25, that level was tested and rejected back at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That was on October the 11th. So if price can close above that, that's the next real key resistance level, then it would suggest to you and I that that market breadth that we're looking at, that negative market breadth, should start to uh, start to continue or should continue to weaken out there uh, from the bearish side. So 11.029.25, that's going to be the key level on a 60-minute 30-minute and 60-minute time frame that you need to see price close above. And if we get that, then it says game on, rally on, and I would expect I would expect or anticipate that that rally would last at least through tomorrow. But that could be the end of it out there. Okay, so we took a look at the NQ. No requests that I see inside the Tiger's Den unless I've missed something. Uh, let's take a look at the um, – what do you want to take a look at? Let's go to the ES Mini. <laughs> As we uh, speak right now, let's go take a look at see if I can provide you with some levels there to be watching out. And uh, Coda will take a look at silver next then. So thank you for that uh, request out there. Let's get the ES mini charts out there provided with the levels to be watching and observing for. Uh, and then we've also got a request for NVIDIA from SNP. So we'll most certainly do uh, both of those uh, for you. But first, we've got the ES mini charts. They're up on our screen. The daily time frame showing that uh, also a key reversal bar. And that would form a roads momentum indicator bottom. We're also in wave number seven as we speak right now. That was generated today. And so the resistance level here for the ES Mini, 3677. Uh, come on, populate, populate. I'd have to do this when we get back to the breakout there. What I'm looking for here is kind of a similar TD9 count breakdown level for its 30 minute time frame. And we're over that right now. That's at 36, 35, 50. It's all going to be about the NQ. Steve Rose with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Are we having fun yet? Uh, Stevie could have more fun if my uh, data flow here was uh, working uh, nicely. Uh, but luckily, uh, we are getting a decent data that appears through my uh, Ninja Trader system out here. You've got NVIDIA. That was a request uh, inside the Tiger's Den from SNP. And uh, you've got a nice uh, bullish reversal candle, at least as we speak right now. That's a big old bullish engulfing candle. Uh, at least it's engulfed the last two days. Look like looks like it's going to engulf the last three days here. Now, you've got also wave number seven bottom. Roads momentum indicator bottom and prices above its red oscillator and change line. So S&P uh, on a daily time frame where NVIDIA should target is 123.96, but more likely 125.77. If it's only a counter trend move, price will or should find resistance at 125.77. Now, on a short term time frame out here, on a, that means the 30 minute time frame we're, that we're looking at. You've got wave number seven that formed out here. You can see that again, very small part of the uh, Chapman wave. Price is above the top of its current profile for a 30 minute time frame. So its next price target is 123.31. If price can close above 123.31, that says a uh, game on, rally on. On a weekly basis for NVIDIA, uh, you're going to have, you put, well, if it forms a bullish reversal candle at present, it is a bullish hammer candle. Need to come back to it tomorrow. But price really needs on a weekly basis in order to get some type of mojo a close above its red oscillator and change line at 131.43. Monthly chart as in the bar number nine of a TD nine count pattern as well. So I hope that helps you out, SNP. Thanks so much for the request. Coda wanted to take a look at two different things. One was ENVX. ENVX up on our system out there. Um, I'm going to try to actually get it on my other system, see if this thing is working yet. Yeah, the answer there is uh, yeah, not really. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Uh, usually I don't have these uh, speed issues out here, but luckily we've got the, the we do have back, uh, we do have a backup. Body index at, the, at closing the gap. So if we take a look at on a daily time frame out here, boy, I wish I had my other screen up on the, because uh, I could take a look at the, uh, well, I can do it here. So there is a B point of an A to B equals CD pattern. You've got to watch for a coda. And that's the trading day of September 29th. And the volume there was 4.4 million shares. If price were to close below 1687, you would have a, con with that, with vol with more volume, more than 4.4 uh, million shares, you would have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, the volume so far today inside of this instrument is 2 million shares and only a couple hours of trading. So it's got volume, but it is trading above that swing point. It is below profile levels out here. So this says just be careful, be cautious, um, because it really hasn't proven itself. That's what the daily time frame, that's what at least I'm looking at. Now, I realize that you're buying this gap here. 
So the top of the gap, this was a breakout level, so I get that. And that breakout level, that's the high from the trading day of August 10th. And that, and that had volume of 5.2 million shares. But you're pulling back into that with what looks like similar volume. We really won't know till the end of the day. But the high of that candle session was um, 1633. The low this morning was uh, 1631. So that's the close. That's the gap that he was referring to uh, that he went ahead and bought. But what you're now going to deal with here is you've got this resistance, these profile levels, and no bottom pattern to uh, speak of other than coming back to that gap breakout area. And that can't be a bottom, most certainly. Let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart, see if ENVX is providing us with any additional information that could help code out. The answer is it is, most certainly. Got wave number seven here as well. That's letter G, and I code. I know you like uh, following the Chapman wave. Uh, that also generated a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom because that was a bullish piercing candle. Now what price is dealing with is a, a profile up on a 30-minute basis. You're looking for a close above 1758. If you get that, that's the top of its profile, then what ENVX should do is run up to 1862. So that's the 30-minute time frame chart. That was a daily chart out there. I don't see a whole lot on the weekly and monthly for us to report to. Other than the weekly right now is finding support at the bottom of its profile and its oscillator and change line. But you most certainly want to be watching that price level. That's the low from September 29th um, out there. And uh, that low is, again, 1687. Now, you also want to take a look at high host silver. So let's switch over, take a look at the silver charts out here. What do we know about silver? Well, on a daily time frame, we know that silver right now is trading with inside its bearish structured daily profile. If silver closes below the center of that level, the center of that level is at 1892. We're trading at 1887. A close below 1892 peak, which suggests that silver would want to make a run to the bottom of its profile support down at 1823. On a week, on a five hour time frame chart, all I have is price pulling back to breakout support, 1864. No, no bottoming pattern, so to speak, but pulling back to your breakout area, just like we took a look at inside of ENVX, that can be a bottom. No bottom signal on the four-hour time frame, nothing on the two-hour time frame, nothing on the 60-minute, uh, nothing on the 30-minute, nothing on the 15-minute out there. So no bottoming signals here to assist us. We just have right now a consolidation with regard to silver with inside its daily profile. And that range, ranges from 1823 up to 1926. So I hope that helps you out with regard to those requests. We've got another request out here. This is coming in from Hector and the fuel injector, and that fuel injector being Patty. And they want to take a look at Exxon Mobil out here. So XOM is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go see what it's doing. Uh, let me actually get back to his uh, question. And the question is, oh, that one's from Ray. He wants to take a look at Nordic American tankers. And is looking for support and resistance. Ray, we'll do that after we take a look at Exxon Mobil then. Uh, Hector says, happy Thirsty Thursday. It is a little bit thirsty. Exxon Mobil, please redo targets. Looks like 132 sooner than later. Thanks for taking us on the uh, ledge as we almost sold. So now, perfect. Uh, so in case of Exxon Mobil right now, its price target here, Hector, should be the top of its daily profile. That's up at the 103.32 level. The top of the weekly profile is at 101.41. Um, well, let me make sure that I got that correct for you. 101.37, 101.37. So we're trading above that. Of course, it's only Thursday. You'd like to see it close above that. The uh, monthly chart still has that TD9 count top, but it looks bullish because price is above profiles. Price is above oscillator and change line. So the next price target here for Exxon Mobil, assuming that it can close above the top of the uh, weekly profile, and again, that weekly profile number is 101.37, would be 103.32. So Hector and Patty, glad that you held on. I would continue to hold on. We're looking at energy prices that are going to be going higher, uh, especially as we get towards uh, winter time out there courtesy of all of the wonderful leaders that we have around the globe. Yeah. So I would just stick with uh, Exxon uh, Mobil out there. Ray in Sarasota, he wanted to take a look at Nordic American Tinkers. NAT is the ticker symbol. So let's get that out here, see if we can get this uh, to him before we go to this uh, breakout here. And uh, Ray's specific, specific question was just simply looking for, can you give me support and resistance? For Nordic American tankers. So as soon as this populates, we will be happy to do that. Come on, chart. Populate for Ray. Come on, we've got 30 seconds. There we go. So your first level of resistance, Ray, is going to be its red oscillator and change line, 281. The next level of resistance is the top of its daily profile, 287. A close above 287 says that price should go target 327. 
327 is its TD9 count breakdown level. Nordic American tankers formed a TD9 count bottom. It did that on October the 5th out there. So uh, watch the 287 level. Clearing that says you're headed to 327. On a and so 255, by the way, is the bottom of the daily profile. Your real support level has to be the low of that TD9 count bottom. And that's at 247. On a weekly basis out here, what do we have? Not much. You got a TD9 count top. Uh, price has resistance on a weekly basis at 297. Support at 246. Ray, I hope that helps you out. Nice to hear from you. And I uh, hope you were spared any issues with uh, Hurricane Ian being in Sarasota. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's uh, close out the show with a couple of things. First one here from uh, the Tiger's Den. Coda wants to take a look at uh, Bitcoin. I've got the October future contract uh, code up on my screen out here. What we can see is that right now you've got the potential for a daily bullish hammer candle. That would then confirm a road momentum indicator bottom. You've got resistance between 19.5 and a quarter and 19,765. And that's profile resistance. If price can close above 19,765, then you're likely looking to move up to the 21,850 level. From a support standpoint, you want to see price uh, stay above and close above 18,370. That's pretty much all that I've got for you for uh, Bitcoin out here. I don't think we need to look at the intraday uh, charts. 
what we do want to do with the uh, last uh, minute or so that we've got out here is uh, go back and take a look at the daily equity future contracts out here. And, and that's because as I pulled those up on my screen, what I noticed was the Dow had made its way up, Dow equity future contract, bottom left-hand panel, had made its way right up to the top of that daily profile where it met those sellers. And those sellers are hanging out at 29,776. Now, I do not know the buyers that we've seen come in. We've had pretty wild runs. We were up 300 before the uh, uh, before the uh, CPI data, whichever data was released. Then we were down with five, 600 points. Now we're up. Five, 600 points, I think right now about 400 points. But you've got those resistance levels to deal with, that 29,776. Now, a close above that would suggest a further rally. The ES Mini is also attempting to form a new profile. I mentioned that uh, during, the, uh, uh, during the intro out here. And so it keeps coming back. And what I mean by that is that tells us right now that support should be at 35,65.50. And resistance should be at 36.93. That's the top of its profile. The ES can close above 36.93. Now, I won't have confirmation on both the Dow and the ES mini profiles until this evening. But right now, we use the information that we've gotten. If price can close above both of those levels, the tops of those profiles, it suggests that we continue to move higher, at least through tomorrow, I would say. So, folks, stay tuned. We've got some great programming lined up. I'm going to be recording the show at 8 a.m. So between 8 and 9 tomorrow morning, please join me for tea and crumpets out there. And have a terrific Thursday. And stay tuned to all the great programming here at TFNN. Take care. Be safe out there.